question. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Folks, you can read Teddy's Tiger Forex report every Monday. He puts out new issues Monday morning. You can also, okay, come on over to the services tab. And Teddy did an outstanding webinar recently on candlestick patterns. You can purchase that for $97, folks. It's not a recurring subscription. Great 60-minute webinar with Teddy talking about some candlesticks. Uh, and, yeah, we got yields rocking, man. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, so let's kick it off with yields. What do you think of the action, man? We had the 10-year spiking almost recent highs. Uh, what do you think of the action as we got higher yields coming into Jackson Hole this Friday, Teddy? Well, you know, Monday we set a nice low in the 10-year uh, and the bonds, and uh, yesterday we had a little bit of a, or excuse me, <clears throat> a nice little pullback, and I think today the follow-through, we have a nice profit-taking rally going on, so yields are pulling back right now. I don't, I wouldn't read into it too much, you know, I mean, especially when you look at the, the, the slope of the trend going down right now for the 10-year uh, sure. and the 30-year. Do you think this, I mean, there's a lot, of course, you know, talking heads, myself included, everyone, a lot of discussion, of course, about where we go for rates, right? Is there a new normalization kind of of the inflation that we might be accepting going forward? Maybe that contributes to a higher interest rate going forward. Big picture, Teddy, where do you kind of see these rates? And I'm asking you the million dollar, billion dollar question, man. But we're at some lofty levels right now. And it seems like we're getting a little bit of a repricing here for higher rates. I know you've been talking about higher but where do you see potentially, because we're at, what, 4.3, 4.35 we're pushing yesterday on the 10-year. Um, is there a level that you're looking for those maybe as we continue? Or where do you see things as we go three, six months down the line? I know that's really far, man, and we got a lot to go on. But big picture, do you try and envision that? Are we at some levels? I know you're always putting out levels to your subscribers in the Tiger Forex report. Um, where, where do you see kind of the risk-reward of these types of trades as we're pushing some pretty lofty levels on a yield at recent highs? That's a great question. I actually went on a golf trip this weekend with somebody from Merrill Lynch and also uh, someone from a big real estate firm. And they asked, asked the same question, where do I see yields really going to? And I told them honestly, I think that by Easter, between, if you look at where they're at right now, over the next, I would say, seven to eight months, that probably yields are gonna be every bit of one, about one to one and a quarter percent higher. Now, the reason I say that is that we've been in fantasy land at 0% for a very, very long time. If we're going to have any type of economic stability ever again, we need to have, right now, this should be like the floor for rates. It's just a reality. I mean, when I was a child, you know, I mean, mortgages were going off at, you know, I mean, there was a high point at 18, 19% was ridiculous, but for 8 to 12% was normal for people with good credit, and that's also for market stability. The fact that we're at the levels right now is causing all this instability, and it's one of the reasons why we have the problems we have right now. It's also the reason why we have such a high debt load. You know what's nice? The higher our rates go, and with the downgrades that are going for our treasury bonds, you know what that means? Our credit ability to um, run up a tab is decreasing. Overall, that is a good thing because we cannot keep doing what we're doing. It's a fun. It's a fundamental economic reality that you know we're we're starting to pay the price, and we're going to have to for a long time. So I mean, we can go back and push them down back to zero, but all we're going to do is make problems you know much much worse in the long run. Yeah, I think we all learned if you had an economics class, folks, in high school or in college, that you either consume or you save, right, Teddy? And usually if you save, you're supposed to be able to consume more in the future by saving. And uh, always interesting when we started getting negative interest rates. How I wonder what teachers were doing during that time when they were teaching the consume and save um, lesson. And meanwhile, somebody said, well, what happens when you get negative interest rates? They said, well, you save and then you get less in the future. I said, what happens there? I know. Um, <laughs> So yields, what, what do you think about the dollar, Teddy? If let's just say that we do get that scenario play out, which is totally plausible, man. I agree with a lot of what you say. We're at a different time, 0% not coming back. Where do you see that hitting the dollar as right now, dollar index 103.60 about right now, um, chopping around a bit compared to the move we've had in yields? What do you see that doing to potentially the dollar if that's where things play out? Uh, well, it's definitely strong. It's bullish for the dollar. Now, I wouldn't say that it's going to make the dollar trend in an extreme way over the next eight months. I think you're going to have a lot of divergence in markets. You know, a, a day like today is actually a perfect way, way to look at it. We have yields that have come back over the past 24 hours trending nicely. And we have, look at the euro, US dollars making new lows today, the pound dollars making new lows. Um, the US dollar Swiss isn't going anywhere. The US dollar yen 
you know, it's getting kind of toppy, but that's the one that's actually technically trading proper today because yields are going down. Oil is also down. The U.S. dollar yen should actually come back, you know, and that's what it's doing. The other currencies where there's all kinds of dollar strength, I think it's a lot more because of the, the fundamentals that are going on over there. The EU's economy is collapsing, you know. I mean, like, they are not looking good for the next two quarters. There is no uptick up. There's no forecast that even remotely makes things look good. Their economy is strained. And the conflict that's going on in the Ukraine is only going to keep to keep on deteriorating that situation. And especially once, you know, if we get Poland starts to get involved with this, you know, NATO is going to escalate things. This is not going to help the European economy whatsoever, you know. And then you have the UK also that's in a really similar shape too. Their economy is imploding also, you know. So I think that it doesn't yields don't impact those two currencies right now, and they're the biggest weight in the dollar index. So. The dollar index may be artificially held up over the course of the next next eight months because of those those currencies themselves. Because I don't think their central banks can really do things to to help them out so much because it's not going to change the uh, the fact that I mean you have two quarters now of the industrial complex of Germany just collapsing. I mean, and that's not look. There, there's no forecast that things are going to get better over the next two to three quarters. And if that does trend continues. The euro U.S. dollar is going to be under pressure. I mean, I can't see how the euro U.S. dollar wouldn't be at parity by Christmas time, the Easter time, if that really pans out. I know, and it sounds wild at parity when we were just at 112, but boy, we were just at parity less than a year ago, man. Things are crazy. Right. Uh, how about crude? Everyone always wants to talk crude, man. I filled my car up. It was 70 bucks for the first time in a while, and uh, things are easing a bit. Even as I talk to you, man, we're getting quite a little drop off right now as we got some action. We got a 77 handle in the price of crude. What do you think of the action in crude as we're getting a little bit of a re reprieve from the recent highs? Well, in the Tiger Forex report, those people know that two weeks ago we had a sell signal and now we're actually down below our downside breakout uh, level and we're close to our target. We're $2 away. I think oil can get down to around 76 something uh, in the futures, you know, in the, in the front month futures sometime over the next couple of days, possibly or definitely next week, you know, as we head into the Labor Day holiday. And then I think it's going to kind of go sideways for a little bit. You know, I don't see, I think that oil probably is setting a higher floor, you know, and that's what we're yeah. going to seek that out over the next couple of weeks and then probably get a bounce and then start going sideways. You know, I don't see, I, overall, I'm still bullish the market. I don't see any reason, fundamental reason why things would go lower, you know, especially after I was just in Michigan and I found out how they're, they're forcing people with uh, wells to cap their wells there. Most people don't know that they drill oil in Michigan, but they do. <laughs> and they're, they're uh, the government, the, the the actually the state is now mandating that people cap their wells so that's a big deal you know if that continues there i know no one thinks about michigan but that's also more production that's going to be in our country that's going to decrease teddy i appreciate it as always man you have yourself a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week brother take care take care folks stay tuned we'll be right back